Isn't it awesome to be in the house of God together? We can grow and learn. So yeah, we always miss Pastor Yamon and his wife and the whole family when they are not here. They can't be here today. But we bless them and we pray for them and we'll see them soon again with us. It's just this morning. He asked me yesterday just to get a, um, a to just um, preach today. Yeah, not get a sermon. It must be in our hearts to just share today. So I believe the Lord's going to speak with you today. I'm his sister and I've been in ministry for a couple of years. But the most important thing is I love Jesus with all my heart and with everything that's inside of me. So it's a blessing to be here this morning and to speak to you guys. Okay, so I'm going to start right off, um, not with the scripture or the verses the Lord gave me, but just a little bit, we're just going to go back a little bit to the Old Testament. Is it fine? The Old Testament. We all know Moses, and we know him as the guy who really spoke with God. He's called a spokesman, and when he heard from God, he came down, and he spoke to all of us. He gave people direction, and it came direct from God. I mean, direct from God, speaking face to face with God. And the little part that I want to touch upon is that Moses went up the mountain. No one else was allowed to go up that mountain. Not even the priests who went into the temple were allowed to come up to the mountain when God said he wanted to speak to Moses alone because he wanted to give the commandments. We all know the Ten Commandments. We all heard about it in children's church and we, we, some of us knew it off by heart, some of, some of us didn't. We just knew that you mustn't kill, you mustn't destroy, you must do this, you must this. And we can go through all of those kind of things. And actually, it wasn't bad things, it wasn't bad rules. It was beautiful. Some of the things were really beautiful. It was actually to bring us closer to God, to understand that we need to be holy, to make us one with God. But in ourselves, we couldn't do it. Even in that time, they couldn't do it. So I want you to just for a short moment, just imagine and just think how it had to be. When, when Moses told the people, you're not even allowed to touch that mountain. You can come and stand around the mountain, but you're not allowed to touch the mountain. Not even the animals. No one was allowed to come close to the mountain. They would be dead. So that sounds like a fear. I mean, a kind of a godly fear. God is going to speak now. Let the earth be quiet and people pay attention. You know, Moses went up and they said there was thunder and smoke and there were shakings. I, I mean, this is important. You don't read about it just somewhere in the Old Testament. Only with happenings, yes, but not like God is saying, I'm going to speak to you, Moses. So, what, so there was this thunder and the people were in awe and they stood there. And then Moses was just getting all these commandments from God. And it was not only the Ten Commandments. There was a lot of other things that he told him about the, the um, tabernacle and children and parents, how to behave. A lot of things he later also mentioned, how everything needs to be built and all that kind of things. But you can't believe it. While the people were waiting there, Moses took too long. They said, no, Moses and God is taking too long. Maybe he disappeared. So with all the fear... And with God actually commanding them and telling them, Moses, only get up here, and Moses is going to speak with us, and, and then oh, with me, and then he's going to come down. It didn't even work. So fear is wise. Psalm says fear is wise. We need to fear and reverend God. Amen? But even in that little piece, I realized that you can tell your child, if you don't do it, I'm going to give you a box law. As jy het nie nou doen nie, geen Xbox vir a week. You can try and you can say, I'm the father of the house, I'm the mom. And you can try with fear, do a few things. But I just realized, even with this whole example, all of those people, I think it was a few thousand, not one of them could wait. And, and really just like decided, okay, we'll wait for Moses. No, he disappeared. And what was the first thing they did? They built a golden calf. A calf, another image to worship. So it also shows us that people were made, were created to worship. We created to have fellowship with God. We created to obey and to be one with something, to show respect, to worship. But in this case, they made the, the, the wrong decision. They got another calf, another, another thing to worship, something dead. So when Moses went down and came down over that mountain, he wasn't very happy when he saw 
what they were doing. He thought maybe this is a sound of our fearing people or there's a war. But then he listened and he said, no, this is a sound of like people having pleasures and parties around the calf, <laughs> going crazy and things. And he was so mad, he actually broke that stone. God wrote upon it, he just broke it. And he said, where's all the people that choose the Lord? And then the Levites came. So he said, he just, he just shouted out, where's the people that says, God, you are first. God, I choose you. God, I'm for you. And the Levites came, and then they had to destroy some of the people there making the calf. So it's actually a little bit wild. And then it went on, and they had to make a choice. So the people had to make a choice. Who do you want to serve today? So with fear, many things you're, gonna, you're not going to get many things right in life with fear, but to have fear for God in a reverent way shows respect and it will bring you far and it will keep you safe. So the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. But then there's another thing today that is love. That is love. And when I read through the scriptures last night and I listened to what the Holy Spirit was telling me, it was about love. Because if you're in love with someone, and if you really deeply love someone with your heart, you will obey. If you really say, Lord, Lord, you're the master of my heart and of my life, the outflow will just be obedience. You want to obey him, not because you fear him. You want to obey him because you love him. You want to do what it tells you. You want to live in the word, the word of God. You want to be led by the Spirit. You want to because you love Him. And you can't love Him and you can't show the love of God if you don't understand His love. If you haven't met with Jesus yourself. We're going to read through some scriptures today. And I ask that by the Holy Spirit, He will speak to you. He will speak to you today because it's only by the Holy Spirit that you can be reborn and be born again into this kingdom of love where he is Lord, where he's your master. You're not a slave to sin, but he's your master. It says in the Old Testament, today I set before you life and death. What do you choose? I think there's a song that says, I choose you over and over again. This morning when I stand up, I choose you over and over again. If there's so many empty spaces, I choose you over and over again. If everything is not in control in my life, I choose you over and over again. If everything is in control in my life and everything is good, I choose you over and over again. See, if you go and read 1 John 4, I actually didn't even take one scripture out of there because I don't want to sound condemning today. But there's a few things that the, that the apostle says straight. If you don't do my commandments, you don't love me. If you don't abide me, that you don't know me. So we have to come to this place where we will really know him. We will really make a choice to love him. Because when Moses came down from that mountain, he came down from that mountain speaking to God. And you know what? Before he came down the second time, I believe, and it said in some of the books, it said that before Moses came down the second time to give the Ten Commandments, the Lord first showed him himself. Can you remember it? When, he said, Lord, uh, when, Mo when God said, Moses, I'm not going to show you my face, but I'm going to pass um, um, behind you. Yeah, he had to face the other way and he hid him in the cleft of the rock and he said, Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger. So there he, he received God himself. It was a deep thing happening in the inside of his heart. Remember in those days, the Holy Spirit just came upon them. They were blinded. That's why their hearts were, were blinded and their minds were blinded. That's why they couldn't even obey God because the love I believe, wasn't yet poured into them. The Spirit wasn't yet inside of them. That's why Jesus had to come, to rend the veil, to torn the veil, so their hearts were hardened and their minds were blinded. You can write down 1 Corinthians 3. It says there that they had a veil in front of their face. They couldn't see. 
That's why they wanted to worship something. They, they made this calf. Their hearts were hard. Their minds were blind. They were far from God. I mean, they've been with him. The cloud. I wish I can see a cloud by night and a fire, of a fire, of fire and then a cloud of shadow in the day. I mean, bread full from heaven, sea open wide. It sounds like miraculous. It sounds like this is the life I want to see. I want to live. And yet here comes Jesus, humble and lowly in heart. No one expected him to be in such a manner or to appear in such a manner. And yet all that you saw was love, love, love. And he went and he himself were torn. He torn the veil so that you can have eyes to see, so you can have a mind to understand. He torn the veil and he said, come into me. Come and sup with me. At the cross, he was torn open. His blood was shed. Come and see this love. Come into me. Come have fellowship with me. Yes, you're going to fail. Yes, you're not going to be able to keep the, the Ten Commandments. But if you're going to love me with your whole heart, you're not even going to try to keep the Ten Commandments. You're just not going to do it. You're just going to love me. <laughs> You're just going to walk in, in my ways. It's easy. It's the life of the Spirit. But 1 Corinthians 3 says it was a commandment of death. We are not there anymore. It will take you away from Christ. He says, so come, see what Christ has done. He opened the veil so he can live inside of you by his Holy Spirit. When Moses came down from that mountain, his face was shining. His face was shining with the glory of God. He saw him long-suffering, gracious, full of mercy, kind, easy to forgive sins. He saw God in a way that his face had to be hid because he couldn't look at the people. The face was shi his face was shining. And now the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, if we receive Christ in our hearts... Actually, if you go and look at a few um, meanings of that word, of veil, it says if the veil is turned from their faces, or the, and the veil is turned from their hearts, actually it means like if your heart turns to God, the veil goes, and the veil falls off, and your heart can see him as he is, and your eyes can see him as he is. It's a work from the Spirit of God. When we are hungry and when we make a choice to say, I'm going to turn. And we can't see God and understand this life if our hearts are veiled and if our minds are veiled. We're going to be not free. We're going to live a life by trying and trying and all these harsh rules and commandments. But if the Lord by His grace and by His Holy Spirit can come today and open our minds and open our hearts that we can see His love just think about the love that God has bestowed upon his son to draw us to himself. This love that gave himself up for us. He loves you. He loves you. And if we can turn our hearts completely, wholly to him, we will see him completely as he is. Completely as he is. So the scripture that came to my mind we would know that, that um, it's a dead letter. The New Testament tells us it's a dead letter. It's dead commandments. But if we realize that Christ within us is the hope of glory, we can start shining with his love. Even more than Moses, Sean. We have this treasure. 1 Corinthians 3 says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We are frail and we make mistakes, but we have this treasure. We have Christ with inside of us. So that the glory can be seen and so people can um, know Jesus. So they can see him in us. But our hearts need to turn completely. You can go to Matthew 22, verse 37 and um, 38. I'm just going to um, touch upon a few verses today. So the highest function of the law was that we would become his lovers. That, that was actually the purpose of the law, to bring God's chosen people into oneness with him. But that was impossible without Jesus. It was impossible. He had to come down as a man, had to 
come and carry all of our burdens, all our sicknesses, all our lies, all our sin, so we can be free from it and really know him, know the love, so that we can live in this higher life, this higher life to be overcomers. So it says here, Matthew 22, verse 37, and I want to really just look at these two verses very deeply today, because we're not going to look at the Ten Commandments. You know what it's all about. But the Bible says that those Ten Commandments and the whole of that law, this law is taking the whole place of all of that. And that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. To love the Lord. To love the Lord. How can you do it? If you don't really know him, how can you do it if you haven't heard the good news that Jesus died for you, that he has a plan for your life, that you're not just here for your own desires and your own plans, your own game, your own show, but you can be real and worship him, that you are here to show forth his glory. That's actually the only reason. You're either in the light, you're out of the light. There's no in-between. And the youth, um, at the youth Friday night, you said such a beautiful thing, um, Pastor. I can, I can also call you Pastor <laughs> because you preached. And he said one thing, he said one thing, if you desire him with your whole heart. And it, and it, just, it just got stuck to me. That's what we need, to desire him with our whole heart, with our whole mind. With all our strength. Because then he said, yes, it's desires that, that leads you to a lot of other things in this world. You have a desire, that's why you end up there. You have a desire and a temptation, that's why you end up in death and end up in all kind of nonsense. You have a desire, but if we can have a desire with our whole heart. He said, seek me and you will find me. He didn't say Maybe. Seek me, it's desire me with your whole heart and you will find me. And you will hear me. You will hear me in your, in your heart. You will, you will hear me through another person. You'll maybe hear me in the word while you read it, but you will find me. And as you find me, you will stop. And as you turn to me with your heart, the veil will just go away and the condemnation and the laws and the dead later will just go away. And as you read this letter, and as the word becomes alive by the Holy Spirit, you will, you will become a living letter that people will read. And they will glorify Jesus. They will glorify Christ. So it says here, love the Lord. Do you know that love is a choice and a commitment? When you are in love, you marry someone. And then you need to work hard sometimes. Because when there's things that happens in a marriage or in a relationship, it's not just a way of giving up. Because you say, Lord, today, for better or for worse, I commit. I'm going to work it through. I'm going to stand strong. I'm going to love. You make a choice with your enemies around you at school, bullies, people tormenting you. Your own mind, but let's speak about the enemies, people uh, that are bullying you at school or in your job situation or wherever. What do you do? It's so easy to say, oh, I'm going to curse you, man. Your business will just soon dry up. There will stay nothing over. And you think you're this mighty prophet. Then actually Jesus says, no. love those who hurt you. Pray for those who curse you. And you start praying for your enemy and something happens in your heart. You start praying for the people hurting you the most. And something happened in your heart. Before you see it, you forgive them. Before you see it, you are free. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 3. That when the veil in your heart turns completely, you make the choice. You become more free and free because you see how Jesus does things. And then you start doing it the same way. It's to love. It's a choice. And then it's a commitment. It's a choice to obey him. You choose. Every day there's life and death. You choose, are you going to obey him? You choose if you're going to follow him. You choose if you're going to listen to him. You choose if you're going to care for others as he cares. You choose. 
every day. So what are you choosing? But today we must choose, brown or black. Yes, I saw some of you thought I came out like the, this morning. I know, I saw on your faces. I just ignored you. I'm crazy enough to do it because I, I saw it, so I had to do it. Either we choose today how we're going to walk in this life. Not going to get real far. Okay, net sommige tyd, die, now you're not going to get too far. Okay, this way, this way, then here, then there, then. What do you believe? What do you choose? We look like that in the spirit. We look like waves, tossed to and throw. We treat people that way. One day I love you, the next day I don't love you. Then I need you, then I don't need you. I will forgive you if... You're not intentional in saying, this is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you, my neighbor, may I never, may I never not worship him, may I never, may I never not stay in love with him. He's the lover of my soul. This is so important. Because we can't go through life blind. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. <laughs> no one else. Yes, I have my children. Yes, yes, all those things have orders. But I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, Lord have your way in me, not my will, it's a decision, but your will be done, that's what Jesus said just before he died, that's where Jesus made a choice just before he died, not my will. But your will, I choose today to forgive. I choose today to come sit at your feet. I choose today to take the word when all my mind is so filled with troubles, anxieties, thoughts, condemnation. It's just, vrrr. I choose today to be still and come to you, to come to your word if I can't see you. It's a choice and it's a commitment. It's a type of love that says, I choose to follow. I choose to to listen. So love the Lord. The meaning of Lord, and you heard it throughout the few sentences I spoke now, the words, Lord, to love the Lord. He doesn't say any other thing. He said to love the Lord your God. Lord means maximum authority, all authority. You're my master. Just say the word. Left? Yes. Right? Yes. I don't hear anything. I know you are good. You are good. I know you're good. I can't see anything. I don't hear anything. You stay in the word. You wait upon him. You don't go and build another calf or get another image or get another idol or fill your life with all other things. You fill it with him. You say, Lord, take all, take my heart, take my mind, take my strength. It's a maximum authority. He's master. And that's where the scripture says, if you love me, you obey my commandments. You obey my commands, God, commandments. If you love someone, you will obey. We spoke about it. So it says, love the Lord. And he immediately just becomes your master. Gone is all confusion. Gone is all other voices. He's your master. And you can immediately be led by his spirit. Be led by his love. Be led by his light. Isn't it awesome? It's just to love him. If love is in the center if love is in the heart, all else will just follow in a godly way. So it's love the Lord your God with all your heart. Say all your heart. All your heart doesn't mean this. This is confusion. All your heart is with everything, completely, your whole heart. Heart is the core of who you are. It's the center. It's the core with your whole heart. It's the behavior, the actions, and the choices. It's the will 
So if your behavior and your actions and your choices are in a godly manner, it shows who you follow. And it's not condemning, it's motivating, it's prompting you to be hungry and desire him because your actions will show the tree that bears fruit, you can see by the tree what water does he drink, what, what soil does he eat. You can see the fruits, and that's Jesus' plan for you. I don't care how many mistakes you made in the past, but hear the love of God today. You need to be a tree. You need to be planted and firm and stand by his grace. To love the Lord your God with your heart, your behavior, your will. What you say and what you do will show who's your master. You can think by yourself, cursing words, hate, lies, revenge, truth, love, forgiveness, humble, just like Jesus. Even if you lose, you don't care because you stayed with him. You stayed in Love. So love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Oh, soul is the emotions, the emotions, the feelings, the convictions. We need the Spirit to renew our minds. The passion says, to, um, with loving with all your soul is to love Him with the energy of your being, with your whole being, the energy that you have. You're not thrown around by your emotions anymore, but you're led by the Spirit. You keep your mind here when your mind goes all around. I choose with my soul, with my mind, to know that you are good with my soul. Amen? And then the last one is, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all, again, three times, with all, with all, with all, completely. Everything or nothing. Half, half, a wave. But with everything, with everything like he gave, he's everything for you. He's everything. And still right now, he's interceding as a high priest for you in the heavens. Interceding for you. That you might not fail. You need to choose. That's what love is. To choose and then be committed. So with your mind is your understanding, your thinking. And we need to allow God to change our thinking. 1 Corinthians 3, again, it says, if, if you turn with your whole mind in your heart and repent, it's to change your mind. And you turn by making that choice. You choose his life every time, every day. Because it never stops. Life never stops. Amen? Things happen all the time, all the time. I don't know who saw the accident the other day just here at Roberts Estate. I was just um, on my way, and then the car was already on, on, on its head, and the lady was sitting there. And those two guys are gone. The one guy that stood there, I asked him, is everything okay? And he, he told me he thought there's only one person in the car, but there was two. And he, the, 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 um, how he knew it was when he saw the one, but he saw there was nothing left of that, of that man. But then he heard, <gasps> He heard it as he was just trying to breathe. And I thought about it because sometimes, yeah, it's an accident. And I just, I, I, was, I, was, I wasn't feeling nice about it. And I was just sitting and I thought, did he know Jesus? Did someone tell him about Jesus? And he could just hear, <gasps> that's how he knew there was another person. And I thought, how would it, how my, how it, how must it feel? What do you Was my kinder. My man, my vrouw, was alles die moeite werd, my leven. En jy, en ek dink, oh, I think the only thing that you can say is, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because what can you say? That's why the Bible says, even in that situation, even in that circumstance, even in that accident, you can still say the name of Jesus and you will be saved. Because when there's nothing else to say, when there's nothing left and your whole life goes past you, he will always be there, always the same, always ready to forgive, to love, to rescue you, to heal you. But we need to make a choice and say, love, love with all my heart, with all my mind, with everything that's inside of me. Allow God to change your thinking. Fix your thoughts on what is true. But what is true? 
And there's so many lies in this world, in the country, with everything. What is true? His word. What is true? Good news. Good news. You're going to hear a lot of strange voices in this time, of strange things happening. And it's going to upset you and it's going to bring fear to your heart and you're going to act strange. (laughs) You're going to do do many strange things because you listen to the voice of a stranger. But if you know that he loves you, you're going to be at peace, whatever comes. Whatever comes my way, you master. What do I need to do? What do I need to focus on? Because if you know the voice of the shepherd, the Bible says you can't even recognize the voice of a stranger. You can't even listen. It doesn't even scare you. You pay no attention to it because you know that you are accepted in the beloved and he's going to carry you through that he's going to provide for you. We need to fix our thoughts on what is true. You can write there Philippians, Philippians 3. It says, think upon everything that is lovely, pure, peaceful. Think about those things if you don't know what to think upon. Think about those things, the things that, that are above. And that's how you take your thoughts captive to say, no, stay in love. Get out of fear. Get out of condemnation. Get out of jealousy. Get out of yourself. And get into his mind. Position yourself. This is the thoughts that is within you. You need to take it captive to say, Lord, I love you. I love you and you love me. Everything's going to be okay. So he says here, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Every passion of your heart, all energy of your being, all the thoughts that is within you. Love the Lord, your master, your God. And then there's a little piece that it says there. And love your neighbor as yourself. Because if the first part is in position, you will love yourself. You will not kill someone. You will honor your mother and your father. You will not commit adultery. You will not steal, destroy. Then you go back to the Ten Commandments. You cannot because you have the love of God in your heart. You won't hurt someone because you know the love of Jesus. And if you do it, you made a mistake, you'll go back to the cross and you'll go back to the person and you'll say sorry or you will forgive or you will help. Can you see it? There's a trying in the Old Testament of doing things correctly in our own flesh. We try, we try, we try, but we forget we're just human. We need a, we need a savior. And then there's a part where your heart is turned to God and you change your thoughts and the spirit of Christ into your heart and you love him so much that you just obey him. And without even knowing it, you can love your neighbor as yourself. You will do to others as you do to yourself. Isn't that awesome? It's a work of his spirit. It's a work of love. Love is the the powerful force. Love is a choice and a commitment, and that's what Jesus did for you. He made that choice for you. I I, I searched for a few scriptures, and I'm just going to read them to you. You can write them down, but you don't have to turn there. And it started with love the Lord with all your heart. Seek him with all your heart. Desire him with all your heart. Because I can hear some people say, how can I do it? How, how? Because myself, I fail. I know he can't fail. But myself, I fail all the time, all the time. If you're going to realize his love, and if you're going to have a desire to meet with him every day, you're going to see how much he loves you. And his love is going to fall into your heart. And you're going to say, Abba, Father. Abba, Father, I'm deep in love with you. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Isaiah 26 verse 9, With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me, I will seek thee early. What is your command? Where do you want to use me today? Please protect my mind. Please close my eyes and my ears for for what is not you. 
please soften my heart. The band can come to the front. I'm almost done. Jesus, I desire you. I desire to know you. I desire to be moved by you. I desire to know this love and this power and this amazing grace. Jesus is a person. He's a person. When my boy was very small, some stuff happened. He was very small. And I was just like praying for him, praying for him. And I was so concerned about him. In, and he was sleeping next to me that night because the father was gone for work and the other children were in their beds. And when I woke up, I saw he was sitting straight up in his bed and his face was shining. There was something like a comfort. And I'm like, huh? What's this all about? Sitting straight. Why aren't you sleeping? He said, Mama, Jesus just stood there. In the, in, the, in the room, he was very small. I said, G what? Jesus stood there, but I could believe every word. Why didn't you wake me up? I'm like, I, I don't even want to hear. Why didn't you wake me up? And I had to speak to the Lord during that day because it wasn't fair. Why couldn't I see him? I'm next to him. And he said, no, just call him. He will come again. Just call him. And I said, Jesus, please come. After the 10th time, I just said, okay, you saw Jesus. And he said, he just stood there. He didn't even say anything. He just looked at me. And he had a mantle on with sandals and a blue stripe. Yeah. Up to today, he still remembers it. I've never seen Jesus. But I have felt him. And I've heard him. And I love him. Here's the word. If you have a Bible, just put that Bible on your chest. Just put that Bible on your chest. And say, Jesus, I love you. I love your word. Let your word speak to me. Let me meditate upon this word. Let me be in this word. Let me hear your voice. Let me just love your words that is alive and full of power. It has the power to change your soul, to change your way of thinking. It has the power to make you a new creation. For those who believe and those who choose, you have a choice. Early I'm up. I desire you at night and early I'm up. I'll seek you. And then it says, Psalm 7 verse 10. I am my beloved. Whose are you? I am my beloved. And he is mine. And then it says, his banner over me is love, love. I am my beloved. You are your beloved. You are. You belong to him. You belong to him. You are his beloved. And his desire is towards you. Can you believe it? It says it just there. I, I pray that in this life, there will come a day that you will say from the depths of your mind and from the depths of your heart, that you will say it. I am my beloved and his desire is for me. Wow. <laughs> what a free love. What a free life to know that his desire is for you. His desire is to have time with you. His desire is for you to worship him. May the Lord take you in so much depth, sir. That you will cry at night because of his sweet presence. But you will stand up with boldness in the day because you know he is inside. As a family, may his presence overwhelm you. May his goodness overtake you. May you stand in this love and be so free. May your eyes really shine with the love of Jesus. Amen. Anna, you guys, you are the Lord's beloved. And his desire is for you. His desire is for you. He longs for you. All of you today can go down like that. His desire. From the Rieder family, that's all that I can remember. His desire is for you. He's got great plans for you. With your whole heart. Just say, Jesus, with my whole heart I come. With that what is left, even if there's nothing left, no strength, no more, if there's nothing, just say, Lord, I come with, with who I am, with what I have. I come, take it all, with everything, Anna. You are your beloved, Lord is for you. You are your beloved. 
You are your beloved. His desire is for you. He's waiting for you to spend time with Him. His desire is for you. His desire is for you. I hope Connor, Mars, Paz, Franco, I see. Is this lief for you, I see? children. Yes, where's all the children in this place? Jesus has a desire for you, little one. Yeah, and you're the great teenager. He has a desire for you. His desire is for you to spend time with you and that you will spend time with Him so you can make a difference and be different in this life. Jelle, I was in standard 9 geweest and I was in my car Maar ek was honger vir die Heere, nie die mekaar die mekaar dinge te doen nie, ek het nooit lief gehad nie, ek het nooit gesoek nie, vir die genade van Jesus. Maar ek het nie geweet, as ek belangrik of het die Heere plan met my nie, ek het nie geweet wat gaan aan nie. En in standaard 9, hoe sit ek daar? Toe riep iemand uit en hy sê vir my, kom jy so, en ek toe sê, hè? En hy soek moos altyd die alleerie in achter, ja, want jy dink nie, hè? Maar vandag is elke een in die plek, today everyone in this place, the Lord says, you are my beloved and my desire is for you. And they called me out and I came to the front and I thought, what's going to happen now? And it just, it just said, spend time in your room with God. The more you're going to spend time with Him, He's going to change you. The more you're going to spend time with you, with Him, you're going to see Him. The more you're going to spend time with Him, you're going to become like Him. Before I knew it, some children at, at the school came to me, asked advice. A lady cut at her wrist. I had to minister Christ. So before I know it, people just came and they were in such a need. As young men, so om jylle wat dood gaan sonder Jesus. Nie dat ek nou sien jylle dit nie, maar elke dag hulle honger so en net vir a druk. Just for a smile. You guys at the back and die brenda. You are your beloved and His desire is for you. To use you gaan lê net op sy boors en bly net in sy arms al die kinders, al die tieners jy was ook een kind toe gebeur die wereld Lee Adi His desire is for you as jy dit gloe staan op, lig jou hande His desire is for you His desire is for you you're his beloved his desire is for you to say yes lord here i am just say lord here i am with all my heart let me see you let me seek you help me holy spirit help me holy spirit just open your heart and let the holy spirit come right now himself and minister to you you're not too old you are not too young his desire is for you. 
You're not too wicked. You're not too good. You're not too sick. His desire is for you. His desire is for you. You are His beloved. His desire is for you. His desire is for you. His desire is for you. Oh yes, He loves you. Just speak with Him. Say, Jesus, here's my heart. Here's my mind. Yes, I choose in this day. Help me in any other day to commit, to choose you. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Just move upon every heart right now. The young people, the old people, all kinds of people in this place, Lord. Thank you that you will touch them right now. Come and be expectant. Say, yes, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit touch you right now with His fire and His grace and His love. Let He Himself pour it out inside of you right now in Jesus' name. Because every single person here, Jesus loves you. And He came to set you free. If you feel this hunger in your heart as if you want to scream, you can run to the front. Come. It's not a thing to think about. If you feel it in your heart, just come to the front. And I'm going to pray with you. If you feel you are sick and you can't take it anymore, say, I'm oh, my beloved and he is mine. Come on. If there's children, if you're old, don't be afraid. If you have never given your heart to Jesus, come today. Come give your heart to Jesus. We're going to pray with you. Come on, pray, 
pray fervently, pray with your heart. In the ways of your spirit. Jesus. The Lord is upon some people and He's touching them right now, small and big. See it. Open your heart. He loves you, He loves you. He loves you, He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Today is turning hearts forever because you make a choice. Say, yes, Lord. Heartbeat of heaven troubled over family members I just sense it in my heart some of you have been praying for your sister for your brother, for your cousin for your husband, for your wife, your child they might not be here in this morning we disagree right now Lord Jesus if they are sick if they are broken if they are confused or lost we call them into your light in Jesus name Thank you, Lord, that you will hear the prayers of us today, Lord, and this morning for our family, for our friends that are lost and dying. We call their names out right now. We say, Jesus, have your way in them. Send someone to them, Lord, that will give the good news. Let them have dreams. Right now, be Holy Spirit, wherever they might be, let them know that you are alive and that you love them that you have a greater plan for them in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. And right now, I can end off with my last scripture. It's my last scripture. Just give me a moment. in the Old Testament how long will you waver between two opinions if the Lord
Lord is God. Follow Him. If not, we don't go there. Today we choose Him. And we won't waver. And we, don't, we won't stumble. But we'll be in the light as He is in the light. Today we choose with our whole heart to go forward with our families, with Christ. Amen. By His grace, help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord, in this world. Help us, Holy Spirit. For we are just human beings. We are just humble human beings. We need you, Holy Spirit, every day. And thank you that you have given us the victory. Amen.